So welcome, we're discussing Shar Aleph, Perak Vav of the Nefesh Echayim. And last time we met, we talked about mankind being the Nefesh of the, of the whole universe, of all the millions of worlds. And so through the deeds, words, and thoughts of mankind, everything else takes shape based on that. Um, whether in a positive way, it spreads light and bracha throughout all the worlds, or it could be destructive if man does bad things. So he sort of asked why it's like that, you know, why did Hashem do that? Um, and he, he gave, he talked a little bit about the answer. We talked about the Maisa Merkava and the different levels and how Hashem created mankind from the top, me'al kisei akavod, all the way down to the bottom of everything that exists. And mankind, particularly through his soul, is comprised of everything in the Bria. Um, so he's continuing, he begins this chapter by saying, okay, but it still needs further explanation. Om namadayin ha'inyan sarich biur. And then he, he makes a comment, sort of parenthetically, about Reb Chaim Vital, the key student of the Arizal. The Arizal didn't really write anything. So Reb Chaim Vital, is the author behind the Sefer Yitzchayim and really everything we have from the Arizal. And he says that everything that Rebbe Chaim Vital wrote is written in shorthand. It's written very um, concisely. He himself wrote that in his introduction. He reveals a hand's breadth. So he just gives a hint, but really a, a lot of the great depths of the secrets that he's talking about, he's going to keep them sort of hidden for people to understand them on their own or however they're going to get to them. So basically what the Nefesh Chaim is going to do tonight, um, after he's put out this idea that man is the soul of the world, he's now going to walk that back a little bit and say that it can't be like literal like we have a soul within us and our nefesh is within the goof and everything the goof does is really moved by the nefesh. The nefesh is, you know, the life force within the body. So he's now going to say that although that's what the words of Reb Chaim Vital would be, that man is like the soul of the body of the universe, but it's not exactly like that, okay? So let, let's see how he says it. It's not exactly as it would be, you know, implied there. That man to all the worlds is really its soul. In a perfect parallel to the soul of man that is inside and connected, clinging to his body. That the, the nefesh doesn't really do anything except through the way it sort of animates the body. So as I lift my hand or eat my dinner or whatever I do, I'm like my soul is arousing my body to do it. And so there's a mechanism, like we understand a little bit about the brain and the nerves and then the muscles and, and the tendons and how they're picking up the bones and, and movement of the body from the headquarters in the brain. And that beyond those physical things, there's a spiritual sort of root of thought that is, goes back to the soul. And so if I think a thought and, and take action upon it, it's all sort of simultaneous. That long chain of soul to brain and brain to nerves and nerves to muscles and muscles pulling bones and so forth. And it's all in nanoseconds. So it, you might think the same thing would be true of man in the in the universe. And basically the Nefesh Chaim says it, it's not like that and it can't be. So he he says it, Sheba oiso rega mamish gama gufo seu, de zev vadai lo yitachen. It's, 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 it's just not reasonable, he says, that that's how man is the soul of the world, that like the world is only moving at the arousal of man. And at first I, I wasn't sure exactly why not, 
like he he sort of just states flatly, Zelo it can't be, it's impossible. They translated, this is absolutely impossible. And well, I wasn't sure exactly it, why. It, what do you say, Shimon? It, 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 if it's true, I and mean, he's saying it's impossible, but it, is the argument of the other land basically the equivalent of you know, saying that the, the Nefesh is the soul of the Allah? Is that like saying, well, you know, if the tree falls in the forest and there's no human to hear it, it you know, nothing happens. It's like it's all human, it's all uh, human centric. Is, is that for the argument that he doesn't walk it back? That there's more, there's more to the universe besides just man, uh, is is what you're proposing, right? Yeah, right. So it's like if he's saying if he doesn't walk it back. Yeah, there would be no universe the except for the expression of man, and that that's like not reasonable. Right. So so if something happens and you know and there's no, you know, yeah, there's no hit suit to man. Yeah. It's key to it, you know, it's like nothing happens. Okay, could be. So um, the chapter we're studying today is, is long. I don't know if we'll get to finish it. There's some really important Haga'ot comments that he puts in. And so I, I did want to try to cover those. So the first one is a short one. It's interesting about Kedusha, that we know we, <clears throat> when we say Kedusha and Shul, we, you know, we say, Vekarazel Zevi Amar. We always, Nekadeshet Shimcha Ba'olam Keshem Shemakdishim Oiso Bishmei Marom. We quote the angels. And this is what the angels say, and then we say it. And so there's this sort of, um, I'll call it a fugue, right? A fugue is a, mu a musical form of question and answer. And so the we, the Jewish people down here, kvutse mala and kvutse mata, yachad, you know, mishal shalim kedusha. We're, we're saying kedusha and they're saying kedusha. So who's first and who's second? And so there's he, he's discussing that topic in this, this haga. Begam lefi ze yichuyav haya. When we say Kedusha down here, So if it were like the literal reading of Reb Chaim Vital, that man is the soul of the universe, so then when we say Kedusha, then the angels would be saying exactly at the same time Kedusha, which again, I sort of think it's, it's weird, Curious, interesting, but that's what he proposes. And he says that's not how Chazal describe it. The Rezal Amru in, um, in Hulin, Ein Malachi Asharis Oimrim Shira Lamala, Ad Shiyomru Yisroel Lamata. They only say their Shira above in the, in the heavenly realms after the Jews say it down here on earth. Shanamar. The language that sounds like the angels will not begin their praises The Nefesh Chaim understands the language. First, the Jews say Kedusha. And then upon the conclusion of the earthly Kedusha, then the angels do their Kedusha. And he says, if you look at the words we say in, in Yoytzer Or, also the same thing. Okay, this is in the bracha of Shmon Esrei. So I never realized that those words, Ukadoshim Michal Yom Yahalucha, that's referring to the angels every day praise you. So it sounds like it's subsequent to the Jewish people sanctifying you. There's also, there's also uh, is there a similar reference in Ubalatzion? Because we have the Kadosh Kadesh there. Yes. And there's also a reference to the Kadosh Kadesh there. So Good. Which is like, they are receiving one from another. Right. Those are the Malachim, right? Yes. So yes. Is, that, is that a parallel? It's the same idea? The way, yes, it is. The way I had always understood it was that there's three Kedushas that we say in Shachris. Um, the one is in Birkas Kriyachma, 
right? In Yoitzer Or, we have a Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. And then we have one in Chazar Sashatz and one in Uvalatzion. And I had heard it that in the first one, we only say over what the angels say. Like the angels are primary and we are telling over what they say and do. In the second one, um, Kishem Shemakdishim Oisobish Meirom, what they do, we also do. Um, we're in parallel, sort of. And in the third one, we call it that Kodosh Yoishev Tehilois Yisrael. So in the third one, which we even translate into a foreign language, into Aramaic, um, the Jewish people are primary. So I, the way I understood it, and it was taught to me, was that there's three different sort of angles on it, three different structures. The first one is the angels are primary, and, the, and we're just telling what they do. The second one, we're both doing. And the third one, the Yisrael are primary in that Kedusha. Um, the Nefesh Chaim is coming at it a little different, I think. And he's saying that if man were like the moving soul, literally, of the universe, then it would have to be simultaneous, and it's not. First, the Jews down below say Kedusha, and then upon the conclusion, that's when the angels on high do it. So uh, again, it's it's interesting that he's so exacting about the exact order of when the angels say the Kedusha, because you know it's it's the heavenly realm. Who really knows what's going on there? Hagam de Milishna de Azoar. Lichoira Mashma Shamalachi Makdishim Kedushasam Itanu Yachad. So the language of the Zohar implies that it's simulcast above and below. Kichadamamish. So the Nevesh says that's because Hainim Ishum de Kedushasam Tkufa Mamish take up Achar Siyum Amiratenu Bechada Karilu. So the Nevesh sort of rejects that reading and says, Immediately upon the conclusion of Kedusha down below, that's when the angels recite Kedusha above. So it's it's a it's a, a funny little point that the Nevesh is examining the exact relationship between the Jewish people and the angels in the recitation of Kedusha and showing that it's not mamish in sync, that one follows the other. Namely, first the Jews say it and only then the angels say it. And that he's trying to show that the, the Jewish people are not the soul of the universe um, the exact same way that the soul is the soul to the body. It's a little bit different. What about the fact that the Malachim, that their existence pre, they pre-existed on a right? Yes. So then, then it doesn't, you know, they're for sure different. And elsewhere, he talked about who's on a higher level. The angels are on a higher level. No, into that the I get. That yeah. I understand. Okay. But he can't. But also, just like we can't argue that you know, Nefesh, Nefesh, you know, Shabbat Dham is the is the prime mover of everything. Or, or soul of everything. There was things here before man. Is because the, yeah, we the, 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 the but Shimon, we had a we had a body before God breathed the soul into it, so the soul could come in last. Well, you're saying that the proof show the Marishan existed before he was imbued with the Shama. Yes, uh, God took like Afar min Adama, right? Afar min Adama. So man was like a golem, like a mannequin, or you know, some sort of moving right. mummy. And then God breathed a living soul into him. Yeah, so the universe could have been like a shell, and then God created man in it to be the soul of the of the universe. Isn't there? Uh, I'm not sure if it's in the Rashi, but otherwise, that discussion amongst the angels was there a discussion about, about about you know regarding the creation of man? Yes, yes, so, and because of his ability to destroy the whole thing, some angels said, "Don't bother; it's a bad idea." So they they existed before the, 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 the because but Shimon I think we we all agree that the angels are not the subject of the creation of the universe they're background right. players right okay. they're in the, they're in the chorus but mm -hmm. they don't have like speaking roles they're it's not about them they're servants to make it all happen to do God's will and play a certain role but it's the not about that. 
They're, the peanut They're in the peanut gallery. gallery, yeah. Okay, so if the Nevesh Chaim has rejected a, a most literal reading of the of Rebbe Chaim Vital and so forth, so let him explain now. So how does he want to yes understand it? Aval ikaro shel davar ki hu yit barak shmo, achar she bara kol olamot, bara et adam, achor lemay sebereshis, bria nifla, koyach measef lekol amachanot. Hashem, after he created everything, he now created man last of Maisa Bereshis. He's a wonderful creation that contains everything that comes before him. And mankind contains within him all the holy divine lights of the worlds above, and the sanctuaries, everything that preceded him is within him. We call Tavni Sakavoda Elyon, the Seder Pirke Amir Kava, and everything that's contained in the, the Maisa Merkava that we talked about, that divine chariot above, it's all within man. Call a Koichois Pratim and Imsoyim. We call a Lamoi Selyonim Vitaktoinim. Every like force, every living force in the upper realms and the lower realms, like so also the frogs and the mosquitoes and the lions, tigers and bears, all of those things, their like life force, their soul is somehow represented and contained within the soul of man. Kulam nat nu koyach, lechelek me'atz musam, bevinyanoi b'nichlaluboi b'mispar prate koychoisav shebo. So that's why people are so complicated and exist on so many different levels, because we start out at the very, very top of everything, at the 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 Kavayochel, the man sitting on the Kisei HaKavoid, all the way down to the lowest creatures that exist. We we identify with all of them. Kamoshikasa Bezoar, Kedibarele Lebarnash, Siderbe Kol Diyuknin Derazin Eloin, the Alma de la Eila, so all the secrets of the upper realms, we call the yuknin the razin tatoyin the alma de tata, and all the faces and the secrets of everything in the lower world. It's all within man. The kula is chakika bebarnash, the iu koyim betzelam elokim, the chsi vayivra elokim et adam betzalmo. So again, it shows the vastness of man and how we contain really all these different levels of everything that exists within the upper and lower worlds. One of the points of the Nefesh Chaim is he, he builds his case and supports them really strongly, um, sort of bibliographically. He puts it right here in the text. He quotes a bunch of places that say the same thing. So he does that now. He says, um, in Tazria, given the Nebra Adam and Reish Parshas Bamidbar, Vayivra Elohim as Adam Betzalmo, Ube Idraba, Kemara Adam, uh, it's the faces of all faces. In the um, Zohar Chadash, I think. Man is the face that contains all faces. And Sham. And Sham. And look in the Eitzachayim, Sharatzelim, etc., etc. So again, I'm not sure why he put all these Marvakayimus in. Like, did he expect people to look these up, or who's he talking to that is going to see all these Marvakayimus? I, I'm not. I don't know the answer to that, but he did. He did that. Um, I have, you know, the Nefesh Atzimtum from our neighbor in Beit Shemesh. Um, Abinoam Frankel, and he, in his notes, he at least puts in all the quotes so we could check them out. Okay. V'zeh kol adam shekol koyach prati shebo, misudar neged oilam v'koyach echad prati, misod hashiur koma, shel klala kochot ve'olamot. And this is actually an important vocabulary term for us called the shiur koma. The sheer koma, look, they use the capital S for the word stature, because the sheer koma means like understanding 
I'm going to use, you know, some sort of like university words, the the structure of the Godhead, okay? Um, the, again, on all the levels of Atsilu, Simbria, and, and Yitzira, and Asiya, and in all the worlds of the Ten Spheroids, and there's something called Adam Kadmon, and, and all that stuff, the description of the whole thing and the whole picture, if you will, of course, it's not physical, but it's a, it's a mind picture, that whole thing is called Shiur Koma, okay, which could be translated as the stature or the divine stature or something like that, but it is, it's very specific. And Chazal in the Midrashim say, like anybody who knows the Shir Koima is Muftach Lo She Yesh Lo Chelok Maba. It's something very special about understanding that which is possible to understand about Hashem and what it, it has to do with its Selim Elohim and so on and so forth. And so the Nebuchadnezzar is talking about it here. And he's saying that each part of man that each individual capacity contained in man, so your, the power of your sight, the power of smell, your, your hands, your toes, every power that you have, your kidneys, okay, somehow corresponds to something in the upper realms. I'm even going to say in the Godhead, in, in the world of Elokut, okay? Again, this is a big Kiddush, and this is important in realizing that our understanding of, as it were, the shape or the, the construct or the diagram, the schematic, that's the word I want, the schematic of the divinity is Kitavnis Koimas Adam. Kemoshi is she's very immune to Shem Mishar Beis Perakay. The stature is the most general description of the powers of the world organized as it were based on the pattern of man's upright form, as will be explained uh, later. So again, this is a really big deal. And he's explaining now how how each one of us the, has the Tselem Elohim, each human being, the way we are with our head and our shoulders and our arms and our legs and our body, etc that somehow corresponds to the divinity in some, which is of course abstract and non-corporeal, but there's some meaning in that. And, and that's how we are acting as like the soul of all the universe. Okay, now he goes into a, a long Hagan, and I think it's worth our investigation. It's a description of the chait of Adam and Chava. So it's a description of man before the fall and after the fall. Of course, the fall is, you know, sometimes it's like a Christian term, but uh, the idea of original sin and everything. But the, the change in stature between Adam and Chava before the hate and after is very pronounced. It's dramatic, and it's, it's a really important thing to understand. A lot of what we do today in Torah and Mitzvahs and Shuba and everything we do is really to get us back to the pristine state that we were in before the chait of Adam and Chava. So it's a very, very central idea in Arab Avodah Hashem. So he comments on that which man corresponds to the shiur koima, ze haya koidem achet, lo haya kalul az, man at that time, which were just two people, Adam and Chava, lo haya kalul az rak mikola oilamois, so man was comprised only of the good side, of the side of Kedusha and Or. And so the dark side, if you will, the Koichoisara did not have any internal expression in the being of man. Okay, it was all external to him. Aval but after they ate the forbidden fruit, they internalized evil within themselves. But that was exactly what the hate was doing. It was taking the existence of evil and imbibing it, consuming it, making it part of themselves. So now the koichos atuma vehara are integral and internal to mankind. And that's why we're so messed up. That's why our world is such a mess. 
and why the Yetzirah, you know, tries to get us to do Averas and speaks to us in the first person. Memela irev oisama yedeze gambe oilamois. So the whole worlds, the worlds were like separated between worlds of light and worlds of darkness. But as a result of the chait of Adam and Chava, it all got mixed together. Now, last time, I think Jay had mentioned, like, we even mentioned, like, why or ask, like, why did Hashem create a man with like, such a terrible shit up? It's a soul in the body. But, um, but really, we kind of did it to ourselves because Hashem really didn't create us that way. We kind of, uh, Adam and Shon veered off the path. Uh, and, and, and that was a consequence of what he did. But he originally wasn't created with, with this terrible shit up, right? It's a good point. What would have happened is that the holy soul would have spread its light and illuminate the body so the body would be really holy so like you know when yeah right i i think that's true so so the the mixture of good and evil as a result of the hate are not only in man, but also in the world. Okay? And he goes on. The situation is that It has to be that even before the chet, Adam and Chava had free choice to turn themselves in one direction or the other for good or for bad. Because that's the point of the Bria, right? If they were automatons, if they were like angels and didn't have any choice, there would be no point in creating them, first of all. And second of all, Lamaisa, they did sin. So you see they had free choice. So that proves they did have free choice even before they consumed the forbidden fruit. So then what happened? What was the change? Omnam lo shehaya inyan bechirato, machmat shekochot hara hayu klulim betocho. The difference is that before the chait, the powers of evil were not contained within him. Ki hu haya adam yashar lagamre, kalul rak misidre koichai sa kedusha levad. I want to remind you, there's a beautiful Midrash that says, when the angels saw Adam Arishon, Bikshu Loimer Lefun of Kadosh, they thought like he was God. They wanted to say Kadosh Kadosh about Adam Arishon, because mankind at that time was so holy and so full of light. There was no darkness. There, even his, his body was full of light. And so he was in a very different situation. He had free choice, but he was, again, Kulo Kedusha, Levad. There was no inclination towards evil or darkness or materiality. The powers of evil were external, off to the side. The Indian Bifne Atzmo Chutz Mimanu, the Haya Bal Bechira, and he had choice. Likanesel Kochotara Chas V'Shalom, Kemo Sheadam Hu Bal Bechira Likanes El Tocha Esh. Like you and I have free choice, we could walk into a fire. But why would we do that? We get burnt. That's how Adam Arishon had free choice to do evil and to enter into the realm of evil. But it like it wasn't enticing. It was dangerous and destructive, and yet the Nachash was able to sell Chava on it. Lachain kisharatsa hasitra achra lahachtioi hutsra hanachash lavo mi bachutz lifatot. So it had to come like embodied as the snake on the outside and appeal to Chava and make it seem really tempting and beautiful. 
to partake of the fruits. Lo kemu shehu ata. It's different than the way it is now because now shayetzer hamefatet adam hu betoch adam atzmo. Today, when I have you know the opportunity to eat a pepperoni pizza and I want to eat a pepperoni pizza, there, the temptation is not coming from somebody else or something external to me. It's coming from within me that I have a sense that I want to eat it. And Adam Arishon was coming from in a different way, where the inclination for evil was totally external to himself. Yeah, was the zihud internalized by the discussion with the Nachash, or was it actually internalized in the Nets? I think it was the eating. I think that. Yeah, yeah the thoughts are. So it's like the snake was the virus in the petri dish. But once, once they ate from the tree, that virus got into their body. Yes, the, the, the contamination was the eating of the forbidden fruit. The, the snake was like confusing them and bamboozling them and making it, temp, you know, offering them temptation. But what really mixed everything up in the Bria and mixed up the good and evil was, I think, the, the partaking of the forbidden fruit. We, we think that we ourselves want to do bad things. That's how the Yetzirah speaks to us in first person. Not that there's some external force that's trying to seduce him. And so when Adam and Chava did follow, they were lured by the seduction. So then the powers of evil became internalized into man. And the change was not only in human nature, but also in the external world, in the physical world. This word das, this eitz das tovera, the word das perush is chabrus. It means connection. So let me just give an example of that. Um, in a very physical way, the um, the the fruits that they were going to consume you know one of the one of the what was the forbidden fruit you know and in, in western civilization they like to call it an, an apple but in the gemara they say it's a te'ena or it was grapes the geffen or it was chita it was wheat and wheat is the best example that at that time it was hamoitzi lechem in aretz what they were able to take off the tree was an edible, you know, more or less like bread or cake or something like that. Whereas today, if you pull a wheat kernel out of the ground, you don't want to eat it. You need to grind it and get the chaff off of it. You need to winnow and thresh and, you know, grind and do so many things until you have something like a cookie or a cake or a piece of bread. That is all a result of the hate. Before the chet, the goodness of the fruits was straightforward and it was there to be consumed in its simplicity. And it would have been absorbed in your body like the man was absorbed and they did not need to go to the bathroom. But it's a result of the chet that there's all these klipois, there's all these shells and husks on our food, like in the wheat. And as a result of that, even after we grind it and winnow it and do everything we do, we eat it, and then we still have to get rid of all the psoilus that's within our body. So this whole concept of digestion and, and excreting the waste products, that's all a result of the chait of Adam and Chava. Prior to the chait, they would have eaten the goodness, and it would have been absorbed in their body, and there would be no excrement that they had to get rid of. So all of that stuff that today the, the mixture of good and evil, it's all a result of the hate of Adam and Chava. So the whole, not only man's internal and psychological and emotional world changed, but actually with the way the, the Mekubalim, the, the, the Nebuchadnezzar and the Zohar explain it, even the physical world underwent very significant change at this time. You mentioned in passing about God being Chibor. Yeah. Um, I, I presume that's where we get the 
the idea that you know uh, the carnal union is you know the Torah they use the term Yeda Adam is Chava Ishto. Right. So I guess and and it wasn't the in the eight from the the eight it's about Chavara they became you know sexual aware. aware. Yeah right aware of their new their nakedness. Yes, it's related. This is what you're talking about, Shimon. When the serpent came upon Eve, it injected her with pollution, wishing to convey that within her body, right, she's now, you know, confused and, and a mixture of good and evil. So this was before she ate. So she was actually eating poison before. In the serpent, the Sheba Nachash Al Chava. When Adam, that happened, Adam was it until he ate maybe Chava already. Yes. Okay. Umi az garama yedeze irbuvia gedoila b'maisa. That caused a great blending and a mixture of balagan. In everything, she called Maisa Adam Hema Bir Bubia, Ishtanut Rabot Meod, Pam Toiv Vipam Ra, Umisapek Tomid, Mi Toiv Lara, Umi Rala Toiv. And I think that's such a great description of everything we do. Everything we do, even the good things we do, there's some bad in them. And even the bad things we do, there's some good in it. We're just really complicated. People are complicated and they do things for good and bad reasons, everything they do. Um, so the irbuvia, I think, is a really key element of the human condition ever since the chait of Adam and Chava. The gamma maisa toiv atzma kim at bilti of Charla Royva Oilam, Shete Kula, Koidesh, Zachav and Nakia Lagamre, Belishum, Natia La Eza Pnia, Makshava Kala, Lagarme. There's some selfishness, there's some, whether it's self-aggrandizement or kavod. Why are you doing that good thing that you're doing? You know, there's some selfishness in it usually. And also in relation to an action that's not good, sometimes it also is mixed into it, some thought for good related in its conception. The Gamat Sadi Gamur, Shemi Yamov Lo Asa Shum Maise, Asher Loi Toiva, the Lo Sachmi Yamav Shum Sicha Kala, Asher Lo Toiva Chas Vishalom. Now, this, these, these words of the Nefesh Achayim, my Rebbe, and I, and I agree with him, is convinced that he's describing the Vilna Gon. Okay? Remember, Rabchaim Velazhin is the Talmud Mufak of the Vilna Gon. And he holds the Vilna Gon in the highest esteem. He, you know, he's like in total wonder at the great Kedusha of the Vilna Gon, that the Vilna Gon is like in totally in a league by himself. He lives like an angel. He only sleeps two hours a day and he only eats a few kazesim of like boiled whatever. He, he was very, very special person, unusual person in his lifestyle. And, and, and Reb Chaim Velazhin had learned with him on a daily basis as a young man and continued his relationship with him throughout his life. So he knew him really well. And he holds him in the greatest awe and esteem. And so he's now going to make the point that even the Vilna Gon, that Sadi Gamur, that Miyam of Lo Asa Shum Maisa, Asher Lo Toiva, the Vilna Gon never does anything bad. Like it's inconceivable to Chaim Velashin. But still, because of the chait of Adam and Chava, he presumes that it's impossible that the Vilna Gon had never, ever sinned. So hear him out how he says it. So even the Tzadi Gamor, that's never done anything bad, the lo sach mi yamav shum sicha kala, asher lo toi v'chatz v'shalom, im kol zeh kimat bilti avshar klal. It's all, nearly impossible, shema asav ha-tovim atzmam, kol yemei chayav, yu kulam b'shleimu samiti legamre. It can't be that everything he's ever done is totally perfect. Ve'lo ya afilo be'achas mehena, Shum chisaron upagam klal that there's no there's no deficiency in anything's ever done it just can't be the zema shikasu it's a pasuk in koheles ki adam 
אין צדיק בארץ אשר יעשה טוב ולא יחטא. So I remember my Rebbe saying, by Reb Chaim Velazhin, how did he know that the Vilna Gon must have sinned in some way over the course of his life? Because it's a Pasuk in Kohelis, okay? Ratzeloimer she'i afshar, shelo ye al kol panim ktsat chisaron b'maisa hatoiv atzma she'ose, ki chet perish chisaron, ki yadua. The Aramaic word for like, for chisaron is, is chet. So even though the Vilna Gon didn't do a veiras, he obviously never had a pepperoni pizza, but when he was doing the good things that he was doing, there would at some point in his life, there must have been some deficiency or something shalolishma or whatever, whatever that was imperfect. And that imperfection is a chisaron, and that is a pasik that nobody can live a totally perfect life. So even the Vilna Gon was not totally perfect as a result of the chait of Adam and Chava. So it's fascinating, you know, sort of how far Rabbi Chaim Velazhin goes here to, you know, describe his Rebbe's greatness and yet somehow mitigate it and show that even my great Rebbe, who I think never sinned in his whole life, but it can't be that he was totally perfect because it's a puzzle that says he can't be. So it's really, you know, beautiful. L'chein k'shemach nisina adam lemishpat lefanim yizbarak shmo tzorek heshboinus rabim le'ein shior al kol prate pratim shal kol maisa v'dibur v'machshav oisa v'kol prate an goisa v'ofanei netiyasim le'an hein hayu notim v'ze ma shekaz v'asher asa lokim et ha'adam yashar v'heim v'chetam bikshu heshboinus rabim man was pretty straight and pretty good and yet he got himself really complicated and messed himself up V'nimshach ha'inyan kein ad eight matan Torah. Okay, so again, this is really beautiful. Looking at the milestones of the creation of the world. The world was created, and man was really straight. But already in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Chava messed it up. But there was an opportunity to fix it at matan Torah. She'az paska ota hazu hama mitocham. So the contamination of Chava by the Nachash, the Gemara says that it basically desisted. It was an end was put to it at Kabbalah Satoira. But then what happened? So again, they had reached the state of Adam and Chava prior to the Chet, but then they lost it and contaminated themselves and again became mortal with the Cheta Egel. So these are very, very dramatic and sort of rep- a repetition of the same theme of man being pristine and immortal and then messing it up. The same thing happened at Kabbalah Satira, the opportunity for immortality, and yet the Jewish people failing and again messing it up. Hainu Shabami Bechutz, Kemo Be'inyan Cheta Adam Rishon. And the parallel that the Nefesh Chaim is drawing in both cases, because man was yashar and kadosh and kulo toiv, in order for him to falter, the satan had to come from the outside in order to create a temptation. So he came to Chava with you know words and thoughts and 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 sounds and sights, and the satan came to them, showing them Moshe Rabbeinu was dead and scaring them and so forth. Kimi toicham from within them. The sitra acha was nizgarish; it had been driven out. And that's the pshat in Hosea, where it says that they violated the covenant ke'adam, meaning like Adam Arishon violated his covenant, and he had one mitzvah and he messed it up. So to the Jewish people. Uh, at Har Sinai, they had re- returned to a state of immortality, and yet they messed it up. And that's what God said to Adam Arishon, Ki tamus, and the day you eat from it, you'll die. Lo shaya inyan klala ve'oynesh, ki mi pe'elyon lo teitze ara, ela ki perish al yedei achol cham imenu tis'arev b'cha hazu ama shal ra. And the day you eat from it, you'll be contaminated. Ve'lo yetikun acher lahafrida mimcha, 
im lo yidei hamisa ba equal bekever. This is an important idea. You don't want mankind to be polluted with evil for eternity. So the way to get the bad out of man is through the decomposition of the body in the grave. So when man only had goodness within him, he could live forever and it would be fine, it would be beautiful. But once he's become defiled and internalized evil, the only way to make it separate out is through the decomposition in the grave. So that's why death becomes imperative. Why was Hashem so worried that man would live forever? The terrorist is because he was contaminated. And the answer is, it would be bad because he's been polluted with the internalization of evil. Therefore, it was for man's best interest that Hashem drove him out from the Garden of Eden. That's why everybody has to die and decompose in the grave. This is the human condition until the time where Hashem will get rid of death entirely. Okay. That was what I wanted to share tonight, the insights of the Nefesh Chaim on the human condition, how it changed in the Garden of Eden, and how today, you know, the chisaron of Ra is integral to man, and everything, all the good we do is mixed with bad, and all the bad we do is mixed with good. The world is a balagan, and we see that all about us. And it's going to be that way until the end of days. There's a significant, there must be a significance that apparently this, you know, this head of Zihun, uh, it's not just a spiritual uh, degradation, but it's a physical, it causes us uh, to die. But our, our generally our death process is just, you know, if you take decades on the average, and it's just a slow deterioration, there must be a purpose in, I mean, is that, the aging process you're talking about? Or the, aging, the aging process. Now, who says we have to age? I agree. The, 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 the Gemara has it that the aging process was nitchadesh. It wasn't always like that. <laughs> One of the things, Shimon, is that, you know, young people have a real lot of Yetzirah. They're really hormonal and driven to do, mm -hmm. you know, various. As you get older, you lose some of that drive and you become a little wiser and, you know, more focused on the brain and so forth because your your body is not as powerful and so forth <laughs> sort of an advantage in a way but i agree there's there's a lot of stuff going on there thank funny, you gentlemen for being car. here thank yes. you so much yes, funny stuff um you, you have to wonder how 
Adam was supposed to grow if he wasn't fighting off the Yates of horror. Like if we, that's one of our assumptions is that we're here to grow and part of growth is mastery, self mastery and conquering uh, these squirrely forces that are in our bodies and Taivas and all this. So what was he supposed to be doing that was uh, gonna make him grow? Great yeah, it's not a real question, but I it's a lot to think that. about. I like, I like, I like the question. I Maybe. think someone is great. If someone, someone is great, can they start to be great? <laughs> but also, okay. what if what if it was external to him? But he did have to make the fight. Like he had to sanctify the whole world. So he was great and wonderful. But there was an existence of yeah. evil. And he's got to go out and fight yeah. it. And, you know, spread you know, the. Couple of other things to just float out. Um, <clears throat> what do I want to say? He's explaining why the Vilna Gon was such an incredible person, but he's quoting from the writings of a flawed person that were kind of quite controversial in and of themselves. Like he's holding every Putzik and Kohelis. As, to, as gospel, so to speak. And uh, what is that? I mean, like, why, why should that be a source? It's very weird. And he could point out blatant things that where Shlomo himself messed up big time. He, he was a little overconfident in, in his wisdom. So it's it just kind of odd to me. I'm not sitting at the highest vantage point in the universe. <laughs> I know Steve, I would, shock. Yeah, right. I would comment that although the authors of the Tanakh, whether it's Yirmiyahu or Hosea, or these were men, they were people, and certainly yeah. Shlomo Melech was a man and flawed person and flawed people, yeah. and challenged people. But I think there's something about the Holy Scriptures that, you know, whether we, we say the written Baruch HaKodesh or the written B'Nevuah, so there's somehow an aspect of divinity within them. And so even though the author is flawed, but his words take on a permanence and a truth that surpasses even the flaws of its author. That's what I would say about that. He was channeling something more perfect, if you will. Yeah, fat. Okay. Anyway, I'm Kabbalistically flawed. <laughs> Uh, Stuart, only... I just wanted to say one quick thing. Your microphone is very hard to hear. Yeah, it was hard to hear you, Shimon, tonight. Oh, okay. So typically, uh, no, I have had trouble all the time, and you have good things to say. So I'm not sure what, what's happening there. I was also trying to talk a little softly because I have some sleeping okay. grandchildren nearby. But uh, uh, yeah, occasionally people do complain about that. So, okay, well, thank just you. keep your ear on it or something. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you. Have a good night, fellas. Thank you. Good night, Colton. Uh, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.